workshop here in oh, Kokkola. Sorry. Just continue, yeah. Yes, sorry. Yes. And uh, since that, quite a transformative experience for myself as a teacher, uh, Storyline has been a very important part of my own teaching. My students have loved it. And every year I've done about two to four different Storyline uh, periods with my different classes. I work in a primary school uh, on first, second, third and fourth grade level. So children are seven years in my class at the moment. Uh, later today, I will share you shortly uh, one of my storyline projects that we had with a third grade class. But um, before that, um, I would like to tell you shortly about uh, what CLIL means, the content and learning, a content and language integrated learning. The children in my class uh, have learned in and have studied all their school subjects in English since they were uh, five years in kindergarten, then in preschool, and coming into Hollyhaka school when they are seven years old. And then uh, they, they do all their lessons here in English um, with me. I'm just looking at my screen now. And one of the, one of the big um, challenges for a CLIL teacher who is uh, teaching children who are Finnish speakers uh, everything in English, uh, one of the greatest challenges is how to um, give them enough opportunities to learn communication, how to understand what someone is saying in their a one language, and again, how to use their very small skills of that second language that they are studying in uh, to start with. And I have noticed that Storyline is a great chance to to do this. Now I'm going to start uh, sharing my my presentation. Storylines magical power in a clear classroom. Um, next picture here. Um, in this third grade, I had a storyline called Nature Center. It started like this, as you see, the classroom, big display board had just um, the background of a nature center. And the aims rising from the curriculum were to get to know our own nearby natural environment, to learn about ecosystems, and then learning about different types of materials, learning to name them and understand what they're like, sorting materials and recycling. Reducing, recycling and reusing was one of the topics here. Sustainability as such. Nature center. In this storyline, the students uh, were research, nature research teams. So they were now not families. Like in most of my, my storyline projects, they have been families, but now um, research teams. Um, the first key question was, what kind of a house does your nature research team live in? The children made houses with a grass rooftop, and this gave all the children a lot of opportunities to join in and um, to create a good team feeling. There were also interesting challenges there and a lot of negotiation and discussion, of course, needed to design a house that all the four or five members in the group thought was a good idea. Children really enjoyed being creative. And this is one of these magical moments that I think are so special in Storyline when the children in their teams start developing the, in this case, first, the environment, often when it's the creating of the characters, that is one of those magical moments when they just calmly, quietly enjoy working and, and thinking who are, who are they or where are they in this story. 
who are you came then next. Like I just said, this time in this storyline in Nature Center, we first created uh, the natural environment and the houses, but then came the characters for the story. This case, the children made only um, small characters, so it was only the head. And this was one of the critical feedback that I gave later, I got later on from the children. They said it was nicer when they had made in other storyline sessions, they had made um, the, the puppets or the characters, uh, the whole body. I show you here what I mean. These have been the favorite type of characters that children here in my class is always enjoyed making. And it is in this nat nature research center storyline, some children were a bit disappointed that they only got to make a head this time. Uh, another uh, character example that I wanted to share with you today is this. This was one of the favorites. There is a, uh, an old dried up felt tip pen and then paper mache ball to be the head and then a body or the clothes made of a piece of uh, material about a square size. And this little cut for the finger here and there makes it possible for the puppet to hold on to things and do things. So these kind of puppets and characters have been the most um, favorite ones that children enjoyed of. Um, so what happened in this storyline nature center? We continued thinking of what it is like here at the nature center and the children little by little in, uh, developed the, uh, the, the environment a lot. Now comes a little video clip. Um, I like to use this here in uh, the CLIL learning environment that um, sometimes a teacher interviews the children or the groups. This is helping them a lot because uh, they're not speaking in their own mother tongue. So they need quite a lot of teacher support and, and also the, the team support that they as a whole group do some presentation. In this case, the key question here was now who belongs to your nature research team? And so uh, my role as it was not a teacher, also not anymore uh, the nature center leader who I was in the in one of the roles. Uh, I was now coming a recording journalist who was planning to make a TV show about this very wonderful and special natural environment called the nature center. So now I took over this this TV show uh, reporter role and I'm going to share with you now a video where the children are going to show you how they now I need to share this video I'm um, not yet sharing it wait a moment um, we're able to hear it sorry <laughs> was it okay the sound yes yes good yeah, the children did also written work. They, they were nine years then, and one of our projects were then uh, this kind of a little nature booklet. And um, here, for example, Adiela Apple has made her book, and they wrote lots of texts about what kind of things they are very interested in and what kind of things as nature researchers they would like to research. And here, for example, Adiela, the ant, uh, writes, I am interested in bugs. They are so small and some are cute. I like bugs. Or then about plants. I'm interested in nettles. They are green and stingy. Nettles are um, interesting. And then, for example, about ants. Or how um, the boy who was also on the previous video Anton said, I'm interested in storms, how it begins and how it is so strong. So nine-year-old children 
thinking about nature and what is very interesting for them in nature. Okay. So um, the TV show was a way to uh, introduce the, themselves as a team. Here you see how the environment looked so great. Children were so proud of their houses. Like on the left, you see the light brown house with the zip line from the house to the tree. The kids were so excited about that. Or the hot tub, the pool or the balconies, they developed that idea how to make a balcony for a house or, or, or um, for, the, for a, a tree house for the children to play in. A nature school was part of this um, project. Our storyline, uh, two nature school days were part of, part of it. And here you see from the autumn term, um, pictures from the nature school. Here in Kokkola, we have this kind of a youth center called Villa Elba, and they have an Elba nature school there. We went there all together seven times during the different seasons. So in the autumn, winter and spring. So it, we experienced the same forest, the same seaside, um, and the same paths uh, during different seasons. And that was very important Although it started from the storyline and then at that point after about six weeks storyline ended, but we kept going to this place and experiencing nature. Here pictures from the winter time when we were in Elba. Ice fishing. There was fun on the frozen sea and science experiments, for example, on the right, you see how we had a rainmaker, hot water, and then ice cold snow, <laughs> and how it started to rain inside that uh, box. But then uh, back to the storyline. So then came this very special day when it was really smelly in the class and very, very untidy. All this rubbish was there. As you see on the display board, had appeared a lot of rubbish also all around the classroom and on the floors even like banana skins and 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 uh coffee filters and tea bags and teacher children were thinking what is this oh no what's all that rubbish in our beautiful neighborhood <laughs> so then we started sorting the rubbish the key question was what should we do now and we started sorting it and finding out the ways how to make sure that we can reuse what can be reused, recycle what must be recycled, and thinking again uh, of some materials maybe to be reused, for example, paper in that paper box some of the paper, uh, we invented different ways with the children how to reuse it. Ilona, you now have five minutes left. That's good. I'm actually at my beginning here or at my end here. Oh, and um, I can still continue a little bit and then we can have some questions or discussion. Yeah, so that was um, the end of our storyline then when all that that rubbish was sorted out and taken care of that we took it to the to the right places so we also learned where to recycle in our own school neighborhood and that children would know where plastic metal glass paper cardboard or biological waste would go So now, actually, I'm ready. Oh, good. <laughs> it was quite short, but I think if there's any um, questions or discussion, that would be nice. I will look here in the chat. I think we had uh, no yes from no questions. No questions. No, but I have people here in the room with me. Maybe we have questions here. Anything you want to know more about, maybe? How did you end the, the story line? Did you have like a big 
Uh, was was that the the Elba adventure? Those Elba adventures then continued later on as well. Uh, the in this storyline, there was a party too, uh, some kind of a smaller party we had, but it was in a way, it was this storyline did not really close all the way because we all knew that we continue going to nature school and we knew that, um, that this process is ongoing during the whole year because just before the next summer holiday, we actually went for the last times visiting that uh, youth center and the nature school we were making pancakes on the open fire and in a way this one doesn't clo didn't close totally which also meant this that we felt me and the children that we could not actually take away the whole display so the display ended being there for the whole year that is not typical usually of course it there comes a clear closure but as you understand this became a little bit different because of this nature school year that we had and they were proud i guess <laughs> yes 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 now we have some questions let's see here um a very good project i got nice new ideas thank you from one listener nice here. Uh, how did you support the language development uh, of your children to be able to communicate on the topic how did the support look like now First of all, I think uh, one thing that as a CLIL teacher, I always do, even if it's not a storyline going on, is that we work in, in long-term topics so that the specific language, thinking of science language, for example, um, that becomes familiar for the children. So thematic teaching and integrated uh, inter intercurricular work is like, I, in my mind, the only way that I can do anyway here in a content and language integrated classroom. Um, so that is one of the ways how we support it. Um, we also um, collect um, lists of words together, like we have seen in earlier presentations today from the Bakkatorp Skolan. So, so the language stays there visible for the children to get that help. Then another language support that I'm thinking of is um, bringing in the classroom different types of literature and books. So reading material that supports the topic mm -hmm. um, so, that, and, so that the children can find words. And, and so for example, for their writing, if they, are, if they are writing, then they can find the language either in the classroom or uh, in the books that we have available. Let me think what other, um, I think one of these ways is that um, when we do spoken language activities, um, we always first uh, think about it in the group. So the children practice and improvise in groups, in drama exercises or, or other communication thing. And then when they have had that chance, I would come there and interview them. So support them and feed in the the language words so kind of like making it richer because they would then use very simple words and i can then put a little bit of teacher impact there um, and then after that would come the time when the whole class would be listening so in a way first among themselves then bring in some teacher support and after that then share it with the whole class oops there's another sing signal Sorry, uh, it's a timer. Uh, yes. I, we have a short question, maybe, I hope. How many lessons uh, during the week you spent with this storyline? Now, uh, usually when I start a storyline, I try to put all my lessons in it. Um, I do have to check, of course, that there's enough time for learning mathematics, too. But I try to uh, uh, integrate all the school subjects mm -hmm in the storyline so basically it's all my lessons that i have uh, in a clear classroom they have their finnish language teacher too uh, which is another person so then those lessons are different and separated from from this storyline also if they have their swedish svenska lessons then of course those lessons are usually not about the topic Sometimes I co do cooperative work also with the Swedish teacher 
and then their Swedish lessons also are about the storyline somehow. That was a very good question. Now we have to round up or what you say. Uh, we're, we're going to have lunch here. <laughs> Hope you get some lunch too. Yes. Very nice to listen to you. I think everybody here thinks the same. So thank you, Ilona, for this. Thank you. It was and nice to be there. Really you. nice to see you. Yeah. And so thank you. And um, thank you. Bye. Bye. Oh, you get an applause here. <laughs> here. A big one. I wish I, wish I could be there. Oh, we wish you could be here next time yes That's next really time yeah. yes okay bye bye and thank you bye. all have a nice bye -bye. day bye thank you bye bye thank you. bye bye thank you